You might be used to hearing about economics in the news, where they talk about money, banks, inflation and the economy, as if it's this physical thing we should all be able to describe. Answering the question of what economics is, is actually a lot more straightforward than any of these things. It's basically the study of choice in a world of scarcity. We only have so many resources available to us, and economics tries to tell us how we can best allocate these resources. This might mean you deciding whether to buy the latest phone or go on holiday, and it could be a supermarket deciding whether to replace their staff with self-checkout tools. Or it could mean the government deciding whether to buy more military equipment or medical supplies. All are economic choices, which stem from the central economic problem. Wants are infinite, but the resources available to us are finite. In addressing this core problem, three key questions need to be asked. What to produce, in order to satisfy all the wants? How to produce? What's the most effective way to maximise production to meet as many of the wants as we can? And for whom to produce? Whose wants are most deserving for us to allocate resources towards? When it comes to actually producing anything, the resources used can always be broken down into one of four main categories, known as the factors of production. Land is any natural resources used to make a product, and this includes the ground that we stand on, but more importantly actually anything that comes out of it, or occurs naturally on or in it. So beef to make burgers, oil used for fuel, or the gold in a necklace would all be classed as land. Labour is any human resource, so the teachers in a school, or the pilot on a plane. Capital is any manufactured aid to production. Ovens in a bakery or the power station used to produce electricity would be examples. And enterprise is the creativity needed to combine all the other categories into something profitable. This would usually be the entrepreneur running the business. Now when we're allocating resources, there are three groups involved in this process. Households are the main source of spending. We call this consumer spending. This is us and our families, every time we buy something from the supermarket or choose which games console to buy. In making these spending decisions, we're motivated by a desire to maximise our utility, which basically just means satisfaction gained from consuming or using a good. Firms also spend money purchasing capital goods to help them produce their output, and that's called investment. Their objective is usually to maximise their profits. The government is also required to spend money on areas like education, infrastructure and healthcare. They'll have a huge range of objectives, including growth, reducing inequality and tackling poverty. We'll look at these in more detail later on in macroeconomics. Which brings us on to the fact that the study of economics will be split into two main areas, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Micro is about how individuals, households and firms address the economic problem. As you might expect, these are smaller scale issues that are concerned with specific markets and industries. Microeconomics might ask questions like, how much do train companies charge you for a ticket in peak time? Does buying milk affect the demand for coffee? And what are the benefits of using money? Macro takes a more holistic and broader view of the economy and how governments address the economic problem. And so might ask questions like, how does trading between countries impact individual economies? Is national debt inevitable or a bad thing? And why are some people without jobs not included in rates of unemployment? Some comments that we make in economics are very clearly testable. If we said that an increase in consumers' income will cause demand for own label supermarket foods to fall, we can have a look at the data, see what happens when people have more money to spend and how their purchasing habits change. These sorts of comments that can be tested against the facts are called positive statements. There's a negative correlation between unemployment and inflation would be another example doesn't mean to say it's definitely correct, just that you can test it and draw a conclusion as to whether it's accurate. Normative statements are much more subjective, based on value judgments. If we said that the government should enforce minimum prices for beer sold in supermarkets, it's an opinion. Some would agree, some would disagree, and no amount of testing is going to change that, and so that makes it a normative statement. So to summarise, economics is concerned with scarcity and how resources are allocated. The central economic problem is the fact that our wants are unlimited, but our resources are finite. And to meet our wants, we produce goods and services using the four factors of production, land, labour, capital and enterprise. Economic agents called households, firms and governments then make decisions on the best allocation of these goods and services. And from here, the study of economics will be split into two strands, microeconomics and macroeconomics.